think you're going to get sent, right? They'll get concerned and run away. I don't really think the hard would save you. I don't think so either. I think we were just dead. They had too much push and too many long waves there. Um. All right. So uh, I'll start it off, off with the, the Sakura question. Welcome. Um. Of like what secure what what Sakura holds with, etc. Um. So this is going to be a quick Sakura guide thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so Sakura is a tier one unit uh, that is upgraded, goes seedling into Chloropixie into Sakura. And so the Sakura is the final evolution or upgrade of the seedling. Uh, so the, the tier two version or second upgrade of the seedling is the Chloropixie. Uh, upon death, it gives you six Mythium. Uh, after the wave ends, similar in scope to the treasure hunt of the pack rat, uh, but a little bit different because instead of transitioning it down, it just is given upon death so that you can theoretically utilize these guys as a DPS unit as well as um, Mythium, uh, taking some of the guesswork out of when and how you should be a utilizing unit. Uh, and then the Sakura is the final upgrade of the seedling. So the Sakura has an interesting setup in that every single wave it is alive at the end of the wave, you gain 110 HP and eight damage. And then post wave 10, so starting on wave 11, if it survives, you're gaining double the stacks. Now it's interesting because theoretically then you're gaining what I believe to be 15 value every single wave as long as your Sakura is alive. Now to me, that's extremely useful for a lot of newer players as value that's just given whenever you hold and whenever you have a, a large hold is in my opinion, good. Um, and it's, a, I think, a, probably one of my favorite opens for new players in general. Um, so I think uh, learning Sakura open will generally be pretty positive for anyone who's newer in the game and you're going to be overbuilding anyway. Uh, it's going to give you scaling potential and so on and so forth. So the traditional setup for Sakura and the only time I really think they're worth getting is if you place a Sakura on wave one. Now it is a 250 gold unit. So it's going to be a little bit of a tough sled with low workers early. But with cash out, you're able to get four workers by the beginning of wave two. And I think that increases the viability and likelihood of it working out for you. So realistically, all you do is you place Sakura down. Uh, then what you do is uh, push workers. The, the only thing that can really leak you is a 60 on two and then a 40 on three or more. Um, the single DT does not leak you on two. Uh, you survive, but like with no health. It's very close, um, but you do survive. And then how you survive a DT, for instance, on three, is you place a seedling directly in line with the Sakura. And uh, that will cause the seedling to take the aggro of the DT and uh, give you a, a pretty good chance to hold. Um, now, one thing I will note is that your biggest weak waves realistically are going to probably be three if the person is saving into you, say, and sends you a brute. Um, I'm not sure how well Chloropixie really does into a situation uh, with a brute or a fiend or let's say, you know, um, anything of, of that nature. Um, so keep in mind, you might be a little weak on three. Uh, and then seven and eight. So your biggest thing is you want to make sure you have good potential for hold on seven and eight, something like sand badger, um, canopy, uh, any other type of, of unit that would help you there bunk on, on seven or eight is pretty solid. Um, all things considered. And so, um, I think it's a really solid open, but I also think it's going to take a little bit of understanding on how your, your, your value scales, but much like kingpin on 13 or you know um anglers and bounty hunters early the value is fake on bad waves right you're gaining value in the in the damage and the health but on say seven and eight you might need to be a little overbuilt 
um, for Sakura to work out. Now, you might ask me, Flight, how exactly am I supposed to, f to split with this unit, right? Am I supposed to have it split? Am I supposed to have it full tank, etc.? In my opinion, the first handful of waves, you should have it split tank or full tank. Um, and so, technically speaking, to split tank with it, you just look at this circle, right? And say, okay, if I want it to split tank, I place a unit, not here, but down one more, right? So I'd place, not where this mud man is, and so I'll, I'll go through it like this. Technically speaking, this ward should more full tank than just simply split tank. This mud man should truly split tank, where um, about half will go on Sakura, about half will go on mud man. It's the same thing you do with Zeus, Poda, anything like that. And then um, as you go up in this circle, right, technically speaking, I believe this ward should split tank, um, but it, it's going to be probably more aggro than not. Um, and so you kind of kind of keep that in mind. By wave seven, you're going to start wanting to take the aggro off of Sakura and put it onto your tanks that you're building behind it. So for instance, um, you know, let's say this is a wild shroom, right? You're probably going to want to have this as upgraded as a wild shroom into a canopy on wave seven here. And then going into wave eight, you're probably going to want to place something along the lines of an upper split even more than your traditional split to keep aggro off of Sakura and allow it to deal damage. And this in turn will have the positive side effect of pulling all of the sends to the right here. So any, any sends that do send you will be moved to the right, um, whether it be uh, dinos, DTs, anything like that, all of it should go right, allowing your tanks to get in front of and allow your Sakura to deal damage. Now, don't take this too over the top, right? You don't want to be going like this up the side and have like 12 of these guys running up here. Then Sakura will take aggro. You're traditionally going to want to have maybe one up or one over like this. Um, gives you a, a pretty good opportunity to hold, etc. cetera, um, on wave eight. Being that wave eight is a, uh, a ranged wave and, and you want to keep that Sakura healthy. Um, the other option would be to build your tanks just farther forward in general. So like for say instance, this is this is your tank here. That combined with an even split should allow Sakura to take potentially a little bit of aggro, being that it's you know behind Sakura in this situation, but your tank should inevitably take the majority of your aggro in this positioning. So that's kind of Sakura. Um, there isn't really a whole lot to it. I think it's an interesting unit, and I think um, lower elo especially can really benefit from utilizing something like Sakura as, um, you know, you're, you don't really need to focus so much on um, magic damage then, right? Sakura should be mostly all you'll need to hold you on, um, you know, 13, um, 15, anything like that, even 11 um, for that matter. And uh, I think it's a safe enough option as an open um, that it, it can be utilized by a lot of different people. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little Sakura breakdown. Um, if so, like, subscribe. It helps me in a ton. Uh, drop a comment if you want to see anything else. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace. All right, guys. Boom. That's Sakura. That's Sakura. Okay. Does that, does that make sense, Chris? Does it make sense, uh, Malakato?